Praise God. Somebody give God a praise in here. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house a little more time to share the gospel of Christ. You ready for another round in the word? Praise God. That's what we're here for. Come on, let's acknowledge your heavenly father so you get into the word tonight. Father, we thank you for your graciousness, your anointing, your peace, your love, your, your mindfulness towards us, O oh God, in that all things that you have prepared for us, you are unveiling, teaching us through your Holy Spirit, revealing even your deep thoughts, hallelujah, and plans for us. And so as we embrace your Holy Spirit tonight and allow your Holy Spirit to impart to us truths of the kingdom, mysteries of the kingdom, that we will not just hear or just believe, but the word and us will become one to bear fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. And so we pray against every spirit of distortion, distraction, confusion, delusion, illusion, every work of Satan, of deception, we bind and shut down now in the name of Jesus. That there be clarity of heart and mind and soul and spirit and clear deposit as your Holy Spirit move mightily in our midst. We sum humbly submit and receive with faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming. And for those who have taken the time to join us online, special greetings to you too as we aim to get into the word tonight. We are still dealing with the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. And we are, we are announcing to the devil that what God has declared for us is for us. Amen. And we are embracing the word of God and the move of the Holy Spirit to understand those things. Hallelujah. Jesus said it in, we started Matthew 13. Hallelujah. I believe from verse 10. When the disciples asked, why do you speak to them in parables? Hallelujah. And in parables that he was speaking, it was regarding the gospel of the kingdom. He said he never spoke without using some parables. And he spoke to them in parables. And the disciples was asking, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know. Huh? Given to you to what? To know the mysteries of the kingdom but to them it has not been given huh for whoever he says has to him more will be given and he will have what abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him come on somebody even what he has what and so it is important then it is it is of utmost importance that we seek to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Because he says, those who don't know it, even what they have, will be taken away from them. In other words, they're going to lose everything. Huh? And Jesus spoke about that where he says, those who keep these sayings of mine, those who what? Keep these sins of mine, he says, they be likened to a wise man who built his house upon what? Upon a rock. That's Matthew 7. Praise God from verse 24, I think to verse 28. Praise God. He says, therefore, whoever hears the, these sayings of mine, Jesus says, and what? It's not just to hear them, but obey them. You hear that? He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. Many people hear the word and even can recite the word back to you, but they don't do it. And they will say to you, but I know it is so. But the word of God is actually saying to us, you don't know it if you are not doing it. <laughs> it's, it you have to understand what God is revealing to us through his mind. We, we understand the mind of God through the word of God. And then we speak to people based on that word with the wisdom of God. With the what? Wisdom of God. And we show you that afterwards. He says then, whoever what? Whoever hears these words and what does them. 
I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and what? It did not fall. Why? For it was founded on the rock. Come on now. And he says, but everyone who hears these things of mine, notice, both of them here. Did you notice that? Both of them here. So it wasn't like they caught the ears and said, we don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. No, they heard it. They actually listened. <laughs> but he says, they were not obedient to the word. That was what um, the Hebrew writer in, in Hebrews 4 verse 2 would say. They did not mix the word with faith. Because what does faith produce? Obedience. Come on now. Huh? So he says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and what does them will be like, does not do them, right? Everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house and what? Both build house, but this one is, this foundation is different from the first. The one who does them is like one who builds house on the rock. And this one, he says, is like one who, one who builds his house on what? On the sand. And he said the same environmental conditions hit him as did the one who heard and obeyed the word. But his results were far different. He says the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds what? Blew and beat on that house. And it fell. And what? Great was its fall. Come on. He lost everything. And it takes much labor, effort, time, and, uh, and, effort, and um, strength to build a house. A lot of sacrifice goes into building a house for anyone who tries to build one. Hello, somebody. And he says he lost it all. Come on. Not because he did not hear the word. Not because he didn't he faced different or more harsh circumstances or environmental conditions than the one who heard and obeyed, but because he did not obey the word. He heard it, but he didn't do it. Come on now. And it says the wind blew beat and that house and it fell. And so so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people what were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as what the scribes. Come on. Yeah, you have to know. And Jesus knew his position. And so he's not just handing out some information like, let us just reason. You got some thoughts, I got some thoughts, and we are just sharing thoughts. Not at all. Jesus knows his position as Christ, as teacher, as master, as the one who the Lord anointed and sent to teach the people. I mean, even the... The, the woman at the well said that about Christ when she discerned that the man she was speaking to was a prophet because he revealed to her the kind of living condition she was in with different relationships, failed relationships that she went through, failed relationships that she'd been through. And of course, she said she discerned that he was a prophet. But then when she went with some religious argument with him, Sensing is a prophet, and is what they would call those prophets preachers. <laughs> Sensing that he's a prophet, you know, she started to raise up a religious argument with him. You know, she uh, said, Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you, and you Jews, notice the talk, you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Huh? And, and of course, Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. Watch there. He says, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For what? Salvation is of the Jews. In other words, person can worship God out of ignorance. 
and that is not effective worship. And she knew it. Come on now. Because look what the Lord says. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers. He said, that's not true worship. That's why I say the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is what? Is seeking for such to worship him. And when she heard that, he said to her, God is a spirit. And those who what? Worship him must worship him in him. So it's not just by the letter of how they operate, but the nature of how they operate. Now it's not just the word, it's the spirit. The word is truth, but the spirit in which they operate in that truth. Because even the devil quotes from the word, but the spirit of truth is not there. In other words, it's not consistent to what is truth. That it. So the woman said to him, what the woman said, I know that Messiah is coming, which who is called the Christ. She said, when he comes, he will tell us. And in other words, she hear him teaching now, you know. And she's saying, yeah, that, that the teacher is coming, man. He will come and teach us. <laughs> and Jesus, what the one had to say to her, but I who speak to you am. Um, she was ignorant of that. But once she got truth, you understand, and the word hit her, notice her response shifted immediately. It wasn't a delayed response that one day, two day, three day later, now she said, oh, I got it. Oh, now I'm going to tell others. No. Immediately, huh? there was an immediate response when she heard that word. And of course, she ran off, left bucket and all. Come on now. At this point, the disciples came and the marvel was talking with a woman. But the woman in verse 28 says, Then she left her water pot. She didn't even run with the water pot back to the village. She left the water pot. Come on, because, and I don't think this is out of shock. It's because she's planning to come back there. Because when she went to the city, what did she do? She said, come see a man. So she was going to bring them where she ran away from. Hallelujah. It wasn't a thing. She just got some information and ran off and gone go do her business. No. There's a tendency amongst the religious to... to to garner a little information from that teacher and from that teacher and from that teacher and look here, look there and look everywhere. That's the, there's a common tendency with Gentiles especially to do that. And the scripture does talk about it that the Greeks, they seek wisdom. The Greeks, they what? They seek wisdom. Yeah? And so they're always running to get more knowledge. And we have to be careful of this running up and down to get knowledge. But, but we find that knowledge is not being applied or useful to the point that it is transforming our life. You get it? Because it's not about just getting the head knowledge to say, I can repeat what was said or I heard that before. No, is what is the word applied is the word known. Did you hear this? The word what? Applied is the word known. You cannot really know the word just because you hear it and can recite. You know the word when you hear it and declare it and living by it. Come on now. It's when you're living by the word. Then the life of the word is being manifested in you. You and the word become one. Huh? And in so doing then, grace is released to reveal that you're not just a hearer, but you're a doer of the word. Got it? It's in 1 Corinthians 1. Yes, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 and 23 says, For the Jews request a sign. And the Greeks, which speaks of the Gentiles, he says, they seek after wisdom. But what Paul said, we preach Christ 
crucified. He says to the Jews that looking for a sign, it's a stumbling block. To the Greeks that looking for wisdom, it's foolishness. Come on now. You got it? So he's saying then, if you really want to know or make that transition from the old position to the new, as we are laying the foundation for those who what can move to, into a new season, must have the new mentality that goes with the new season. So, so we send the, the new mentality you must have towards this is understanding you cannot operate or you used to operate in a new environment that is regulated differently and get the same results that are expected. You got it? Because when, once the season shift, it's going to have new requirements on you. You got that? Hallelujah. Just like going to a different country, it, there, there are different rules that govern that place and different culture of how they operate there. You can't go, when you go there with that old mindset, you will end up um, having some culture shock of seeing how different they are from you. But if you are going to become part of that country, there has to be some retraining of your mind to accept the terms and how to function effectively in that environment. You got it? That is what the the, the gospel of the kingdom is about. The mysteries of the kingdom is revealing those hidden truths to you that will secure your position and your possession. That will what? Secure your position and your possession. If your position is not secure, your possessions are also not secure that's why it says those who don't have that's what jesus said in matthew chapter 13 verse 10 to 14 10 to 15 he says those that don't have these mysteries those that don't have the mysteries in verse 12 he says even what they have will be taken away but he says but those who have more will be given and he will have what because what is able to secure his position better than he can secure his possessions better. If his position is not more secured when he has increased in possession, he's now at risk, both he and his possession. Why is that? Because increased, increased, Possession is going to attract more enemies. That's what most people don't know. That's how sometimes that's why persons when they rich, when they are poor and they become rich, the, the friends say they switch, but they don't understand. Say when your possessions have increased, where you would do as a poor man walking down the street and hanging out on the beach and on the corner. You can't do that now when you're loaded. <laughs> so them guys say, Well, see, you can't hang out with me again. But they don't understand because your possessions have increased. You have to gain, you have to take on more security, operate with greater caution. Huh? You can't be light-headed and just say, Oh, I can't walk out on the street anytime and I make because you know those things me have done or nothing that you, you're gonna find out when you go out there. Hello, somebody, because somebody who will, will you say in his vanity and is nothing, somebody out there see it as something and willing to do some extreme things to get it. Come on now. So if you want value what you got, you got to value how secure your position is. Wars are won through strong defense. Huh? Wars are won through what? Strong defense and strong opposition. In other words, they have strong strategies of defense and strong strategies to, to overcome the opposition that is laid against them. Huh? 
so there it's up divine strategies divine what strategies praise God so what the thing is that when persons understand the, the implication of this now we have to understand that if we're saying yes God I want more do you get where we're coming from if we are saying then yes I accept a new season and I believe that God has brought me into this new season and it's going to bring increase of possessions then there must be increase of security increase of alertness and awareness of your environment you can't walk carelessly when you don't have nothing when you have something that would be foolish because people would say well yes if you walk down the street empty handed and nothing in your pocket you don't have nothing here yeah, you walk and a man hold up, you know, have nothing to give him. But if you have something and walk even with your pocket empty, him they care to a party someday, you know. And you better give him, otherwise he's taking you out. Come on now. So you can't just walk carelessly and say, well, it has happened. You're begging God for the increase, but you are not making the effort to make your position more secure. You got that? Doesn't that make sense? Right, so your position is of utmost important than even your possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Because in God's eye and God's operation of the kingdom, the in, increased possessions must be released to someone who has the capacity and the ability to handle what is being given. Ah, uh, in other words, if they're not able to manage it well, he's not gonna give them that amount. Oh, Jesus! Oh, let's give you a parable on that. What Jesus spoke also, Jesus spoke on a parable of the, the, the ten talents, the one that gave the talents. And so, he talked about one got one talent and one got two, remember. And then one got five talents. And then he says, hey, what did they do with it? But he says, each one was given according to his ability. Did you notice that? Each one that was given was not given according to God's ability. It was not given according to the master's ability that gave it to them. It was given to them according to their ability. Note it, please, people. Come on, you there? All right, let's go to the, that gospel is declaring in this Matthew 25. That's it. Yes, verse, 20, verse 14. He says, Then the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and what delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents. To another two and to another one look at that statement now to each according to his own ability to each what so he never gave the one five just because i feel like give this one five i feel like give that one two and this one i'll just chime with one no, he says every one of them will receive. The one who received one, the one who received two, the one who received five. He said they all receive according what? To their own, according to what? His own ability. And immediately, once he gave it to them, he went on a journey. And he had what received the five talents, went and what? Traded with them and made what? another five you got it and what happened the one who got two likewise he received he gained two more but he who had received one went and what dug in the ground hid his lord's money now i heard for years you know that preachers were preaching this talent as your 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 gift the 
talent is what you're good at doing. I heard that preach for years. And, but in the context of what Jesus thought, Jesus wasn't talking about the, your gift. Note it very well. He, he, he says the Lord's money. <laughs> that talent is money. It was money that was given. Each one had value. Come on. And it says one talent. Well, I have to, I have to probably have to look in another version to see that. Look in a living translation. If you see for one talent, what is the value there? Um, but the talent has value in terms of money. And it will tell you then, this is what this one talent is worth. This is what two talent is worth. And this is what five talent is worth. You don't see it? Praise God. Probably I'll have to look in another translation. Probably contemporary or new international version or international version. One of them would have it. Hallelujah. But I think they state in one of the versions um, what is a talent worth in today's currency or to, in today's worth of figure. But it says there anyway in verse 18, he hid his Lord's what? So his money was talking about. And he says, a long time the Lord of those servants came. Huh? A long time. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and what? Settled accounts with them. Huh? Give me more. Hallelujah. And what happened? So he had received, he who had received five talents, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me what? You delivered to me what? Five talents. Look, I have gained what? Five more talents beside them. And his Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you what? Rulers over many things. Come on now. Now we know that statement was made over believers when they say they, they were serving the Lord to hear the Lord say, Well done, good and faithful what? Servant. And we never thought the good and faithful servant had nothing to do with money. But that's what I'm telling you, say, it has something to do with it, is money he's talking about. Okay, which version is that? Uh, amplified classical version, right? So it's 5,000 for what? For five talents. And so 1,000 will be for one talent. And 2,000 for two talents, right? So if you can check that out, the Lord is saying, whether you have $1,000, Dollar, or you have two thousand dollar, or you have five thousand dollar. He says, if you are faithful with what you have, it will multiply. Lord, have mercy. If you are what? Now many keep saying to the Lord, Lord, if you had given me five, I could have do with it but because you only give me one that is how that one that one with the one talent his mentality was it was not kingdom minded he didn't believe in the power of the seed in his hand you see i've learned that even if your money money is not enough if you treat it as a seed it will yield to your harvest but if you keep on just eating your money and to mouth, you will never have nothing. And it is a kingdom principle. Whether somebody is in the church or not in the church and use that principle, they are going to see increase. I'm telling you. Come on now. You got it? Uh -huh. So he says then, look at it. The master gave one one talent, then one that one and one with two and one with five. The one who gave the five first came to the Lord and said, you delivered to me five talents, which are $5,000. He says, look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done. Good and what? 
faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you what? In other words, even the money that he's able to multiply it here, he says, that's just a fraction of what I'm really going to give to you. He said, that what you made was just few things. You see that? You see it? Oh, Jesus, they want him to answer when he's looking at it. Yeah? Yes, so it's in verse 21. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were what? You were faithful. Oh, so even though he got 5,000 more on his 5,000, make 10,000, the Lord said, that's just few things. He doubled what he had. And the Lord said, that's few. But watch what the Lord says doing now. What he says, I will make you ruler over a few things. Okay. Okay. Come on. So his faithfulness over the little things granted him access over many things. You see, some people believe they can be faithful when it's thing big. But when it look they can't be faithful and God must understand. But I tell him all the while, if you are not faithful in little, you will not be faithful in much. It is a principle of the kingdom. You got it? And, and what did the Lord say? He who had received two talents also came. And said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. That's like uh, $2,000. He said, look, I gained 2,000 more. Two more talents beside them. Huh? And what? His Lord said to him, what? Well done, good and faithful servant. Isn't it the same thing? You have been faithful over few. He didn't say, well, you're as fewer than the one who got the ten. No, he said, same few oh, he said over the one that multiplied five to ten. He says, Your, yours was few. But what you're getting is few. Come on, watch the thing. What you're getting, is it few? No, he says, I will make you ruler over many things enter into what the joy of the lord come on then he who had received one talent came and said lord i knew you to be a hard man listen to his talk and tell me he believed he's speaking truth and god's going to use his words against him Come on now. He says, I knew you to be a hard man. Is the one give it talent to him. What he's saying, I knew you to be a hard man. Listen what he says. Reaping where you have not sown. You get it? Now who give him the talent? Who give him the start? So always he's saying, you're reaping where you've not, has the master not sown the talent to him? Talk to me now. Did he not sow into his life? But he said, you're reaping where you have not sown. Come on now. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. Listen to his heart. Because the word of God says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So why in the heart must come out? And we're waiting to hear it. Hallelujah. God made me a, a acute surgeon <laughs> to get into people's heart and unlock some things huh? yes man they would have sitting and smiling with me and kicking with me and things everything nice until 
a word come and then you find out what is in the heart you hear what he said I was afraid so he said you're hard <laughs> you want to reap where you don't sow and gather where you don't scatter and I was afraid and went and did what hid your talent is yours but I hid it I hid it in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Just like you give me, I give it back to you. As you tell me. Come on now. Is that real truth? But his Lord answered him and said to him, What? You wicked and lazy servant. You knew. He don't say, I don't reap. I, I don't reap where I sow. He said, you knew that I reap where I have not sown. He said, by your own words, you said that. He wasn't saying that was true, you know. But he says, you said, you knew that I reap where I have not sown. And gathered where I have not scattered. So you are to have deposited what? My money with the bankers. Now, if, it's your, if your talent is your gift of singing, you can deposit that with the banker. So he knows his money he's talking about. Right? So he says, and at my coming what? I'd have received back what? My own with interest. Come on now. So you, you, uh, you know, you have it, and you was to give it, and you don't give it. And time elapses, and you don't give it. You know, say, if you ain't even put that in an account, would I have interest and it will give to me? Instead of thinking, no, just as, or if you could ask, just somebody give it to you. Hello. His heart was not trained in the way of the kingdom. When you're trained in the way of the kingdom, you don't think like that. Neither to the master, nor concerning what is entrusted to you from him. Huh? So he says, take the talent from him and what? Give it to the one who has what? Ten talent. Come on now. Did he lose everything? Of course he did. That's where the Lord said what? For to everyone who has. You see the same thing was talking about the mystery of the kingdom. To everyone who has. More will be given. And he will have what? Abundance. But from him who does not have. Even what he has will be what? It's the same thing he was saying concerning the mysteries of the kingdom. The hidden truths of the kingdom are not given for you just to say, I learn about it. It's for you to know it. And the only way you know it is to put the word into practice. The word is not given for you to have a knowledge of the word. It's for you to become the word. Hallelujah. So it says, you and the word must become one. Why you think you are called joined here with Jesus when Jesus is called the word of God? He's saying, you and him must be one. As he operates, so must you. Come on now. And did he operate of himself? No, he operates under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and in obedience to the command that the Father gave him. Huh? He operated as one under authority. He didn't act lawless, rebellious. Huh? Come on now. Getting up in a fit of rage and misbehave and say, well, I just do what I feel. Uh -uh. He's not allowed that liberty. 
as Paul said, yes, you are free. No, sir. But he says, don't use your freedom as an occasion to the flesh. You got that one. You can't say I'm free. So then you can behave where you want to behave and then say, God, understand. Uh -uh. That's not the kind of freedom we come to. We are free from sin to become slaves of righteousness. We are not free from sin just to be free to do what we want and say, I'm free. <laughs> Hello. Come on, you understand this? Hallelujah. Come on, give God the praise. So Paul said it, for when we were what? That's Romans 6, verse 20 to 23 says, when we were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. You didn't have any obligation to do it in the right manner how God prescribed you didn't have the regard. Regard means you had no consideration about that. You just do things spontaneously out of your flesh and whatever you do and seem right to you, just do it so. Huh? And that's why I say you, you were free in regard to righteousness. There was nothing holding and restricting you to do it in a certain way because you, 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 you were just a slave of sin. And he says, what did that produce? Did it produce anything good? He said, what fruit did you have then in the things of which what? You are now ashamed. In other words, it's not a proud moment for you operating in the flesh. Huh? And acting lawless. Those who are in Christ know that. Come on. For what? The end of those things is what? It's separation from the life of God in Christ. That's what he called death. It's not merely just a body dying. Because even Jesus' body died. And he wasn't practicing anything unrighteous or sinful. Come on now. You got it? Right? So he's speaking about when he says end of those things. What it produced is death he's talking about. The end is that you will perish you will be separate from the life of God in Christ. Which is what? Eternal life. It will, you'll be disqualified from it. Sin disqualifies you from eternal life. Because it, it, it is what, that's why God wants to get rid of it out of your life. Huh? He says, but now having been what? He says, since now. You have been, been set free from sin. And having become what? See, you're f being set free from sin. Don't make you just free like a freelancer to do what you want or you please. That freedom comes to make you now responsible. And accountable to the one who made you free. Huh? And it says it makes you then a slave of God and you can't be a slave of God and practice sin because there's no practice in the service of God of sin the practice in the service of God produces what righteousness and holiness look at it you have received you have been become Slaves of God, you have, you have your fruit to what? Holiness and the end is what? He said, it's producing life. Notice, the way of living in sin doesn't produce the same thing. That's why it concludes in verse 23. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in who? In Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a mystery. It is hidden truths of the kingdom. And Paul says we are speaking this wisdom to you. Who are mature. Hallelujah. As that 1 Corinthians 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are speaking to you the wisdom of God. 
Hallelujah. Come on now. So it says, we speak, Second, First Corinthians, yes, 2 verse 6. However, we speak wisdom amongst who? Those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age. So it says, there's another wisdom that people just sit on and just reason, talk to talk, how them feel it, look and how them feel it, so on and forth, and them, whatever that do. And that is not, that is not the wisdom of God, you know. You think so that is the wisdom of God? I, I could tell you what my flesh could do and you wouldn't want to hear that. But I'm not here to tell you what I, what I would do if I was in the flesh. <laughs> because if I'm here to lead you into righteousness by the purity of my speech and word that comes from God, I can't be gloating what I would do if I was not under this authority. I, I can't be inserting that thought in your mind to think, yeah, yeah think about it if I went somewhere, somewhere that would it too. Really? Come on now, somebody. Because when, 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 when someone provoke you on the road and I tell you, say, yeah, man, you see, if I went me, they go spit in my face. What you going to do next time? You go and say, well, a pastor must say, you ain't tell me, you know. You ain't tell me, say, if I were you. Would that encourage righteousness? Or would it encourage lawlessness? So even when I hear you say, something happened to you that make my spirit in me burn. And make flesh feel like, say, why? You get what I'm saying? We must still speak word that edify. We don't sow in the flesh. Because we sow in the flesh, there's a reaping coming, you know. And the reaping is what? Corruption. Corruption produces decay and death and a stench that is not pleasant. Come on, somebody. We carry the aroma and the fragrance of Christ. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. So, we, even when I hear, say, hey, some people were acting up with Jody down there in school, and you understand? And I'm my daughter down the inner night. Now I sleep one night because they bang up to and they say, Come out here. I don't know, think I'm not it. I'm ready to go on somewhere. No, I'm going to be my day, you know. But my daughter, they are Kingston. And I'm going to be enough far from my reach. Hello. But if I'm going to deal with that in the flesh, You would have said, Apostle. No, Apostle. Come on now. Talk to me the truth. Hello. And, and if I stayed here and called her until I say, Oh, if none of them look upon your door again, here is what you must do. Hello, somebody. Is that going to make her be a bitter or worst? There is her mother. Here I am. There is the testimony that I did not call her and tell her that I tell her, say, girl, just be calm and know who you are. Who's you are? Stay focused. I am with you. My prayer is with you. And God's got you covered. When that, that week was finished, they gave her a certificate. Come on now. For participation. <laughs> in initiating in the school. Huh? And have her as what? Second best winner. 
And what did I tell her? I said, watch her girl. They ain't wrong for doing something. You know what you need to do. You think should have any respect for them. You think it should be no second place, nothing down there. They would have her mark. Oh, yes, she come from up here and come down here as a rebel. And then you'd hear the coming about the same apostle daughter. And say them a Christian. Come on now, somebody. If you sow in the flesh to someone who is having a flesh face, you, <laughs> you understand me as a flesh face. They acting upon you when you say something to say, yeah, some would have me understand how so it would appeal to. That is not making a person better, you know. You might think that is comforting them, but you're actually mm -hmm, having them more seasoned in the flesh to say, yes, at least you agree with me. And when flesh find agreement, you know, he's if he talk down. Because now, you, you see, sin is always looking for company, you know. Now, when he find company, it's not easy to correct. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So, so when, when Eve is convinced, says she must take the, from the tree and she eat of the tree. When she eat it, not not happening. You know. But you see, when Adam eat it with her, that is the agreement. You know. So I'm to both. And when the Lord come, you hear what they all them responding now. Is the serpent? <laughs> the man say, "Is the woman you give me?" And the woman say, "Is the serpent the guy help me?" See what going now? Each one passing the blame to another. But the Lord dealt with all of them and said, I gave you the word. In other words, if your response does not agree with the word, how is that truthful? How does that show that you are continuing in the word? You get it? If something happened and it moved you from the word, you're really rooted in it. No, you're not rooted in the word because whatever happens, it should even make you more rooted in the word than you was before. But if, oh, come on, talk to me here. I'm talking to kingdom minded people that understand. Say, if you understand that the kingdom of God is governed by the word of God, and by his Holy Spirit, then you must think according to the word and according to the Holy Spirit. Got that? Once you step away from what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do and choose to do what you feel to do and what you feel to say, you think you are moving under the authority of the kingdom. Come on now. You know how much friends I lose because I would not agree with their fleshly response. I was seen as insensitive. Huh? And not caring and, and, and hateful and heartless. No love, no in my heart. Because I can't believe I tell him that. And a man, a man just tell me, say, the word say. Come on now. But what else is going to save you? Your feelings? Your flesh? It's the word going to save you. And though I might be tempted to side with your flesh, I know in doing that, it will not help you. And I'm here to help you. Oh, come on, somebody. And I'm not helping you in sin. I'm not helping you in evil. I'm not helping you to take sides with the flesh. 
and helping you to get deeper in God. And you get deeper in God through the word, getting deeper in the word and getting deeper in the spirit. Because that's how you are born as children of God. Through his word and through his Holy Spirit. Anything that goes against that is not of God. You remember years ago, I shared with you a, a thing about Jesus when he was talking to the disciples and saying to the disciples um, that what, or he'll be given into the hands of men and suffer. And Peter took him aside. Peter did it discreetly, you know. Take him aside and say, you know, let me put you aside here, teacher. You must stop telling the people this thing. <laughs> He's rebuking Jesus. Telling him, you shall not surely die. You are the Christ. The Christ live forever. Come on now. Jesus didn't say to Peter, Oh, Peter, I know you love me. I know you don't want to see me die. I know it hurts you to say these things. You're so my friend, Peter. You're such a friend to me. What did Jesus say? Didn't, didn't his answer sound harsh? <laughs> That's Matthew 16. All right. Matthew 16 from verse 21 to 23. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. Did he stop there? No, he said, and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying far be it from you Lord this shall not happen to you come on what did Jesus say oh my friend Peter I know you love me you don't want to see me die you're a good friend what would I do without you Peter uh, look in such a warm environment Peter just created no, don't ever think this will happen to you <laughs> he turned and said to Peter get behind me Satan you are an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of God or the things of men come on and I said it to you when you have friends in the church that more mindful about your flesh than about your spirit those aren't good friends could have your mother, your brother, your sister, your daughter, your son, your husband, your wife, your mother, or your father. They, they, they could have be a bishop or your pastor, your teacher, your apostle. You must be more mindful about your spirit than about your flesh. You got that? And you have persons who, when they are more mindful about their flesh, they say, see, they, you understand me, man. That's why I love to talk to you. And they build bond with people in the flesh. When the flesh is going to perish. So, so will that relationship. And so will that life. Come on. Peter thought he was speaking good to say that wouldn't happen. But Jesus discerned it was Satan speaking through Peter. Speaking to someone close to say, you don't have to go, you can stay with us. This will never happen to you. And Jesus said, you care more. That's Satan speaking, that care more for the things of men 
than for the things of God. And purple person will take sides with their friend for friendship rather than realizing, say, if this friendship is based in the flesh and not in the spirit and on the word, where is it leading me to? Did God give you that flesh friendship to watch over your soul? You see, that's why I don't come to church to build no friendship with people in flesh. Because I know that when that friendship is built, there's then a complacency and a point where they start to take for granted. You are my friends so here and I go say nothing about it. And then becoming a crowd breezer, you can't effectively correct them again. And now they are spoiled through friendship that they lose sight of the objective that our connection as friends is for the purpose to present you perfect in Christ. Hello, somebody. That is the means of this fellowship. Come on now. Huh? Glory to God. But they of so Peter at a certain point forget why was Christ sent and he said no man you're not going to die <laughs> but, uh, come on but didn't John declare behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world then he said if he's lamb of God he's a sacrifice a sacrifice will be made for that sin to be taken away. And he's going to have to sacrifice with his own life. And Peter is saying, we don't want to hear that. That will never happen. You know, like some people saying, if you don't talk about it, it won't happen. But Jesus was saying, this ain't something that if you don't talk about, it won't happen. This is the word of God. And when the Lord give a command, whether you want it to happen or don't want it to happen, whether you say it or you don't say it, it is going to happen. Because God is watching over his word to bring it to pass. Some believe if I don't say it, then it won't happen because life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if I don't say it, it won't happen. Ah. <laughs> oh, they got a lot to learn. Hallelujah. But if it is the word of God, whether you are it or not, it's going to happen. Come on. And we need to discern the voice of the Lord. Hello, somebody. Those of the kingdom can discern the voice of their father. And know that's the Lord. Huh? So that will the Lord always say what you want to hear? I mean, when the Lord said to Moses, you will not enter that city. Three times Moses spoke to the Lord to change that word. And the third time Moses spoke to him, the Lord's anger rose and said, don't talk to me about it again. That was it. Come on. Even Moses being a humble man, the word of God said, the most humble man on the face of the earth. <laughs> when God said that it's got to be true <laughs> but even he praying for that request to be changed God said no hello that's settled hello somebody now sir come on now so God did in fact spoke to Moses and tell him you won't enter that land again you, you, I will only take you on this mountain, show you, but you will not go over there. Huh? And Moses sought three times the Lord to have that verdict change. But the Lord tell him, say, no, that's fine. Come on now. The Lord wants us to understand that when he brings us into a position, into a new season our mindset cannot be the same we cannot have the same mode of operation it you, you, 
because if God is going to move you from being middle class as they would say in the world to upper class and the world judge middle class to upper class based on your volume of wealth or possessions if the lord is changing the season for you that increase of goods and riches and wealth going to hit you then your mind must be prepared for it you know come on no. you, you can you get what i say you you can't just leave your house no i know i know have camera i know have security i just say the lord is watching over me i don't need none <laughs> well i tell you when one show up on that compound and something miss you going regret you never have none you see and it's not that you're depending on that camera and that security force to do it, but it's just that you need that in place. It's a practical means of saying those things are in place as a deterrence to those who want to prowl upon you because your, in, your possessions increase. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so when me buy all my first vehicle, still have my first vehicle. <laughs> but it's still my first because I know more coming. <laughs> so when I buy my first week, that, that is that Noah there. They, they, they said them, they think that they thief hard. Well, well, from the first week, me have it, you know. Oh. Alarm put on it and kill switch. You understand? Yeah, man, I, I, I trust the Lord. Yes, man, me trust the Lord, but that the panic man all been care pass, he start to make up a munch of knives. Now be the find out how he gauge you so in care pass. <laughs> you know, wake up the neighborhood. Hello, somebody. But 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 see they know what now? How much years now? Ten years, eleven years. I mean can't lock off that now. Lock it up now, no, but not take it. You know, see, because I don't know, hot care upon the black now for take away. But at the same time, nothing said because I know hot care upon the black, they won't take it. Because you know? it's still a value to somebody. I mean, no fool, fool. Because it's still a value to me. Yeah. Praise God. I mean, I wait till it's gone for say, why? You will me happy. Huh? Right. Well, some people don't know the value till it's gone. Right. So, so, I like to keep things in perspective and in full view and know, say, these are practical things, say. If your wealth increase, you, you can just uh, walk up and down the road like everybody else. You have to now consider putting some security things into place. No, so. Yeah, man, my tall of you, your bodyguard too. Yeah, man, and you don't have to carry no gun, but them can carry for them. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you can plead the blood, them can pay back upon the boy, them too. Oh, you know, I hear them something. No, man. Uh, why didn't take this thing for Canry? Uh, well, me have a son here. Canry, me just call him and say, Canry, come with the thing here. And I blood that just tell him he plead over your son. Hallelujah. And if I don't miss it, Junie! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, when I just, you, you know you got to understand, you know. You got to understand the times you are living in. And if you play ignorant to it and say, No, I just say, Lord, you are right. The children of Israel were the people of God, but they still had soldiers. They still had an army. They still had a militant output to defend Israel. So everybody can just sit down and say, We are civilian. Because what the Lord is making them into a mighty nation, make, raising them up into a kingdom. You understand? So they, they can't just sit back and say, Well, the Lord is our light and our salvation. Of course, the Lord is. 
But the light and the salvation tell them, say, man, draw your sword. Put some things in place now. No, sir. Hallelujah. So, do you trust the Lord and believe in the Lord's sight and over care over you? you you're not going to lift your grill open now. And door open and say, nobody can go in. I cover it under the blood of Jesus. <laughs> you ain't covered under the blood of Jesus, be true. <laughs> but that thief going to find a Christmas up your yard. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God called fool, but he don't keep them. He teach you some things, no, sir. Yes, so we are not carnal in the pain and the carnal, but the, the physical things are needful. Because when the Lord said to his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, verse what, 31 to 33, or 33 to 36, when he says, the, and the Gentiles seek after these things. Huh? It's 31 to 33. All right, so he says... Therefore, do not worry, saying, What we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we shall wear. For after all these things, what? The Gentiles seek. And he says, Gentiles, all his disciples there now are Jews because he first ministered to the Jews, then the gospel went to the Gentiles. Correct? Right. So he, he's then ministering there to the Jews. So he's saying the Gentiles would be in contrast to say the ungodly are the unbelievers. He said, they seek after those things. But look what he said. He didn't say then, you're not to worry about them because you don't need them. You see it? He don't say because you're seeking the kingdom, you don't need no things. No food, no drink, no clothes, no housing. Uh -uh. He said there, your father, your heavenly father knows that you need Knows that you what? You need all these things. No, it ain't going on like when you need it. A carnal, you get carnal if you say you need it. No, you mustn't want no food. You mustn't want no drink. You mustn't want no clothes. You don't want nothing. Because tomorrow the Lord may come. I can tell you, say, you might wait a long time for him to come. I mean, I no longer can wait without food and drink and clothes. But it's not going to be long before you're gone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because you don't know if it's, if it's today, the next hour, or a thousand years from now. You can calculate when he's coming. So what he says, he says, but your father know you need all these things. So he's not telling you to forget those things just to know the kingdom. He's saying, put the priority on the kingdom. You get the thing? Make the kingdom of God, his reign, his, his governance over your life a priority. That when those things come, huh? your heart will not set upon it. And you lose sight of your main objective. Huh? Jesus is the best example of that. He never lose sight of his objective. When he's feeding 4,000, 5,000 and crowds coming and following him, he's still keeping sight. Say, this is not a feeding program I'm starting. You get it? Like all the church, them then do one, one thing and then they see a big response right down of crowd come and say, yes, that is the church must do. But Jesus said, eh, eh. Jesus have to call him one side and say, hold on, labor not for the food that perish. He said, you seek me not because of the sign, but because you ate up the loaves and your belly went full. But he said, don't labor for bread. Don't labor for things for your belly. He said, do not labor for the food which perish, perishes, but for the food which endures to what? Everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you. Because what? God has set his seal on him. God mark him to give you that life. Come on, somebody. And what is that life? 
eternal life and he says you get that life through the word and the word is what he used to govern his kingdom and the holy spirit so he say you get the word to get the instruction and you get the spirit to know how to carry out the instruction because it's not do it any how you feel and just say do it is do it how the Lord wants it to be done. Ah, that's, a, that's what they call a well-pleasing offering, a well-pleasing sacrifice. Huh? Everything that is in the physical realm is controlled by the spiritual realm. Everything. Did you hear what I just said? Nothing moves in the physical without the spiritual behind it you need to understand that and therefore it's either being influenced by good spirit which is of god or evil spirits but it's never happening of its own self are you hearing what i'm saying glory to god huh Revel look at Romans 12 verse 21. Romans 12 verse 21. It says, do not be what? Overcome by evil. But what should you do? Overcome evil with good. So who do you use to overcome evil? God. The word of God. The spirit of God. Come on somebody. The nature of how God operates must be how you operate. You cannot use your flesh. <laughs> to operate against those spirits and win. Come on somebody. You got it? The spiritual existed long ago before the physical. The spiritual what? Existed long ago before the spiritual ever came into being. Come on. And it will be there long after the physical has gone out of existence. That's why it says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. It won't look like the one you're looking at now. Come on, somebody. Huh? You got it? Come on. Second Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18. Second Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our what? Our outward man is perishing. Isn't that the physical form? Are we going to keep this physical form? No. He says this physical body will be changed to a spiritual body. You are not going to keep this physical one. That's why he says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He said this body cannot inherit what God has for it. For what God has for it is eternal. And this body is not eternal. You got it? So that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, there is a spiritual body and there is a physical body. So he says, you're not going to raise back with a physical body. Because <laughs> it's not the spirit being raised, you know. It's the body being raised. And he says, it's not going to raise up a, a physical one again. It was already born a physical one. But he says, it's going to be raised up now a spiritual one. Huh? So he says then, if we understand the spiritual and the physical, then you know that the physical is temporary. But the spiritual is what? Eternal. Glory to God. Huh? Yes, there it is, 44. It is sown a what? Yes, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 44. Thank you. It is sown a natural body and it is raised what? It's not raised a, a natural body again. See, that body was sown a physical body. A natural one is what he called physical. 
Just like when he talk about Adam was made of the earth. And he was natural. That natural man. Then he said, there's a spiritual man. Or a heavenly man. And he said, we're going to take the form of that heavenly one. You got it? So, he, so there it is. He says, so it is the first man Adam became a. Living being the last Adam, speaking of Christ, became a life-giving spirit. Uh, give me some more there. Praise God. And he says, however, the spiritual is not first. But what, which is first? There is what, what he called that body thing from the dust. As it says in verse 48. The body thing from dust is what he called a natural body. But he said the spiritual one is not that natural one. Watch, watch that. You look at it good. You see what he's saying there. He said, the first man who is he called a natural man, he says, that one was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is who? The Lord from heaven. And as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. But as is the heavenly man, so also are who? Those who are heavenly. Come on. Because he said, when you're born again, he's not born again earthly. He's born again having a heavenly record and registry. It's not, it's not, it's not the hospital out here record of your born again. Come on now. It's the heavenly record of you in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, somebody. And it says those whose names are not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire, which he said is the second death. So there is a second death. It's appointed to us to die once, but there's a second for those who have not had their names written. You got it? In the Lamb's book of life. Come on now. All right, Revelation 20. Then death and Hades were what? Cast into the lake of fire. This is what? The second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The born again. God has the registry of those who are born of him. The born of men, that record is kept in earth. And that's where you get your birth certificate. They even give you a certificate to say you're born. Like you need one. <laughs> but it's to certify that you have been registered. Your birth is registered here. And to what country and to what parent. Huh? What nationality. Huh? Right? So the Lord is saying when you're born again, it's not an early record give you that one. Ah, that's no earthly parent. Hallelujah. He said that one is spiritual. Hallelujah. So that's why he said to John, to, to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. So Paul is saying that the physical is temporary. That's what he says. What is seen is temporary. But what is not seen is what? Eternal. Come on now. So we know we are seeing the earth now. So the earth is not going to remain in its physical form. Because just like our body will be changed into a spiritual form. The earth will change also. Lord Jesus. The earth is waiting on us. <laughs> To change. Hallelujah. And that's in Romans 8. Hallelujah. All creation is waiting for that moment. Come on, somebody. Huh? He said in Romans 8, verse 18 to 21. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be what? Compared with the glory which shall be revealed in who? In us. For the earnest expectation of what? The creation. That is everything that is created. When he say creation. It's not us he's talking about. The earnest expectation of the creation. You know? He's saying that everything that is created in creation. The earnest 
expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons that's us eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of god this creation was what subjected to futility not willingly but because of him who subjected in what in hope because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into what the glorious liberty there is us again the glorious liberty of the children of god it's coming into that glory the glory we come into the whole earth will come into it and it won't be dust again oh jesus oh, somebody get this word hello somebody you understand what we're saying hallelujah and that will be awesome people of god hello we have more to go in a man to to permanently correct to what to permanently correct things into the natural or the physical one must first address and correct it in the spiritual hmm? to permanently what to permanently correct something in the natural or in the physical one must first address it where address it and correct it in the spiritual or in the supernatural did you hear that so persons that's why last week i was saying to you some person will hear what was sunday I was saying to you sometimes person will be talking to god and they're talking to god about this what god is talking to them about that and they're saying that don't have nothing to do with this i remember what i was telling you that is like somebody who's getting massage on a finger and then they say oh now i feel like my bladder is full Oh, those massaging and hear anybody say, Oh, no, I, I feel like uh, I, I want to use the bathroom. Because there are nerves running over your body that when a certain nerve is massaged, it has an effect upon a certain other area in your body. You get what I'm saying? Now, God, if God could just deal with just the area saying, This is the problem I have. But he said, No, it has a root cause like the nerve that run like roots nobody say it have a root cause and if i get to the root you won't have to be worrying about the symptoms lord have mercy you get it so sometimes the lord is when the lord was saying to peter there saying to him get thee behind me satan because you are an offense to me you know, things that uh, Peter will feel insulted. Man, I take Jesus aside, my teacher, and I want to tell him, say, man, just put away that thought, say, not going to you, not no harm to you. And I might watch, whoa. <laughs> and had he received the fullness of that word, the time wouldn't come that he's denying Jesus, you know. He still struggled to receive that word. That's why when the, 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 the men when G, when the men came, now he's drawing sword. Because Jesus talked to him earlier the same day, you know. So it's gonna happen again. And when Jesus said that to him, he said, Man, I will never leave you. <laughs> Go with you even unto death or prison. The Lord said about Peter before the cock crowed tonight. Once you will already deny me three times. So you don't even know me. Peter, Peter didn't accept that neither. Even when the Lord went to pray in the garden and said, Come pray to me, he's dropping our sleep. And the Lord said, You can't pray to me, no man. Pray lest you enter into temptation. He couldn't keep up. Come on. 
And then now when it's happening now, he's pulling out sword to say, yes, I'm ready now. But when the Lord tell him, say, put up that sword. Because I can call to have legions of angels. I can ask my father and he will send them to me. Come on. But those who live by the sword will die by the sword. When Peter recognized he didn't have that to rely on. Now when the man handling Jesus, he said, I don't know him. That's how that came about, you know. If you don't receive the word that, every word that the Lord give you, whatever word come behind it, you will also not be able to keep it. And don't you recognize that even after his raise, they were struggling to believe his resurrection? Since you're struggling to accept his death, who are you going to accept now his resurrection? You see it? Because every word is connected. You can't take this word and say, no, that one may put on a shelf. May do without that one. It's going to affect how you learn. It's going to affect how you grow. Huh? I don't say we live by most word that comes out of his mouth. He don't say we live by some word. He said we live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. So there's no word from God that is unnecessary. That is just an accessory. We can do without that and still be good. I've seen a lot of Christians try that. And it has had great impact upon their walk, their relationship with God, and their functionality as persons who are in the kingdom. They're behaving like defects. Come on. Because they're still struggling with some word they should have received a long time ago. And as long as they wrestle with the word, it's going to affect how they respond to leadership, to the word, and under the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. It affects in every area. Come on now. You get it? The spiritual is how we use to correct the physical. Do we know that? Hallelujah. That's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Huh? Seek first what? Seek first what? So it says, you, The Father know you have need of these things. Food, shelter, clothing. So why ain't tell him I'll see the kingdom? That way I bring you food. So I'm saying, they're saying, what does that have connection with that? Because the Gentiles seeking after those things, but they're telling us, don't worry about those things. Just seek first the kingdom and they'll be added. How are you going to get it added if we seeking the kingdom? He said, it's not you adding it. He's doing the adding. Come on. A soldier cannot fight effective warfare if he's concerned over domestic affairs. If he's the only battlefield and they wonder if he be able to drink milk yet. I feel like they'll pay. He's not coming back home, you know. He's going to be there, there dreaming until something reach him. You have to focus on the battle before him. So the Lord is saying, seek first is what? What he's saying then? You recognize the Lord these things I need. You know what the Lord is saying? Go into that room where you're sensing the overwhelming feeling of all those needs coming on you. And lift up your hands to God. And him as your king. As your God. As your deliverer. As your provider. As your vindicator. Come on, somebody. And he said, when you're doing that, you're going to just start to sense things, start to shift around you. Whatever was in there in those things got to move. Come on now. Because the kingdom start to manifest. 
you get it but if you're going around stressing and forcing and grieving and frustrating yourself come on now then it making it look like god not able it making the enemy look stronger than they actually are in face of god so that's why I say, seek first the kingdom. What does God want you to do? If you get about doing it, what you need will come. Come on, somebody. But if you keep being self-centered on what you want to do, what you want to get you may get it but the things that god wants you to do will be left undone so you will still lose everything you see it so that's why he says seek first the kingdom god's rule and reign over that need god rule and reign over that want god rule and reign over that clothes god rule and reign over that food god rule and reign it is him you're seeking come on hello it's not about getting the highest paying job and getting the biggest opportunity and the land that is offered for you to be upper class no, he says the kingdom you put. And find out what can you avail yourself to in the kingdom of God that will start to open these doors to you. Oh my God, my God. Come on, somebody. You got it? Matthew 12, verse 29. Matthew 12, verse 29. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus says, uh, how can one enter a strong man's house and what? Plunder his goods unless he what? He first binds the strong man. Come on. Talk to me now. When you go into your workplace, when you're going to the area where you live, when you're going to the area where you go to school, do you bind the strong man there? Or do you just go there and think, say, oh, I'm just going to try my best and do my thing and try to come out here? He said, you must declare the kingdom over that place. Who is king over this? And he said, if you put that thing under the king's hand, the kingdom is going to manifest. And the kingdom of all the provision, all the things that are related to your welfare is there. Lord Jesus, come on somebody. He said, don't matter if you are a prisoner, you're going to become the head prisoner. It don't matter if you, you, you are a slave, you're going to become the head slave. Because the kingdom is at work for you. A spirit of excellence will be upon what you do because you're not doing it to honor and please them you're doing it to honor and please the king those who go to workplace and not prospering as children of god is those who go in there and not honoring god they're just doing it just to honor men and to get a little something and go home when you truly put god first I don't care if it's hell them put you. You're going to prosper there. Out <laughs> of mercy. Because David said, even if I make my bed in hell, the Lord is there. Come on. He, he's, in other words, he's abiding in the presence. And in God's presence, what? Come on, somebody. There's fullness of joy at his right hand. Oh, come on, come on, come on. So you have to put the spiritual weapons to work. I don't hear anybody here, but I know this is good word. You must bind this strong man. Lock showing up in your house. Start to bind lock and tell lock.
speak to lock like you're speaking to your neighbor and say listen to me you don't have no authority here lock you know who is my god Koshabaseti. he is el shaddai the many breasted one Oh, Shamasa. He is the one who produces over and over and makes things fruitful. And he curses what is unfruitful. Come on, somebody. Because he is the God of more than enough. Come on, somebody. Huh? They must speak to the thing, man. Come on, somebody. When there's attack and frustration against you, you must bind this strong man and lock it down and command those attacks to be subjected to you. Why? Because the Lord said he has given you power over all unclean spirits. I may always repeat that verse and tell the devil, say, you are unclean spirit and all them below you are unclean spirits below you. And if you say, I give me, he gave me power over all unclean spirits, that's you and all your hosts. They are under my authority. Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody. But if you don't know that you'll be a victim, hanging down your head and begging, please, sorry for me and give me a ease, no devil. No, man, his devil must be asking you to give him a ease. Come on, somebody. And you know if you give him none. Hallelujah. Come on. Huh? Give him your power, man. You must exercise that God given power. Huh? In the spiritual realm, good is always superior and powerful than evil. In the spiritual realm, what? Good is always superior and what? Powerful than evil. Just as light is powerful over darkness. Just as love is powerful over hate just as truth is powerful over lies just as genuine is powerful more than the false just as eternity is more powerful than time come on hello somebody and God wants you to understand that's the rank and power he's giving you in Christ. He elevated Christ above everything and said, now sit in him. Lord have mercy. What he said? Abide in him. And let him abide in you. Come on. Let his word take root and bear fruit. Because he said, if you abide in him, you will ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Come on, somebody. Huh? But if you don't believe, or you won't get that. The child of God that is spiritual and not carnal minded understands and rules his environment. What he does, understands and what? Rules his environment through the spiritual. How does he rule it? His life, his what? His life, word, and work will always outlast and outshine the carnal minded. His life, word, and work, come on, will always outlast and outshine the carnal minded. See, that's why God is telling you cannot be carnal minded. Because being carnal minded puts you as a dis dysfunctional 
it makes you disconnected from the life God wants you to have in Christ because you're, you're, when you're carnal minded you're sharp towards things in the flesh but lacking in things in the spirit and God is saying he's a spirit and he's looking for true worshippers that will worship him in spirit and in truth you got it come on 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 2 <laughs> Corinthians 4 verse 18 says while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are what the things which are not seen why for the things which are seen are what that's why I tell you say the physical not staying this physical body this physical world will not remain as it is it's going to be changed. Hmm? But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. That's why the Lord is giving you eternal life. Giving you an eternal body. Giving you an eternal inheritance. Which is the kingdom. Come on. You can't hold on to it eternally if you don't have eternal life. You can't enjoy the benefit of it if you don't have an eternal body. You see? So that's why it says, all these things are working together for your good. Come on, somebody. You got it? How can you look at the things which are not seen? How can you look at things that are invisible? You see? It says, that is what you do through the spirit. It's not what you do through natural eye. It's not human vision give you that. It's the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. Come on somebody. The Holy Spirit what? Glory to God. He read that also from what? 1 Corinthians 2. Yeah. That the Holy Spirit teaches us. The wisdom we're using is not wisdom of men. But the wisdom of what? The wisdom of God. Come on somebody. Huh? Glory to God. He says, God has revealed them to us. Who has revealed them to us? That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10. God has revealed them to us. How? Through his spirit. For the spirit what? Searches all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? He says, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Do we have that spirit? Yes, he says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Which spirit have we received? But the spirit who is from God. How why have we received them? That we might know the things. That have been freely given to us by God. Come on somebody. It's for us to know things that we could know naturally. Or see naturally. Or understand naturally. He says this is divine revelation. Huh? He says these things we also speak. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches. It's not words which man's wisdom teaches we use in the tell you. He said, uh-uh. But what, what? But the wisdom which the Holy Spirit teaches is the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. Comparing what? Spiritual things. Remember, say, spiritual things are not physical. They are not fleshly. So he said, they are not intangible form for you to look at it with physical eye. It's in spiritual form. It's invisible. But being invisible don't mean it's not inexistent. It's just that you cannot see it with the natural eye. It requires spiritual vision to see it. Huh? That's why he said then the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit. Why doesn't the natural man receive it? For they are foolishness to him. It doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense to him? He doesn't have the Holy Spirit to reveal it to him. 
come on. He says, nor can he know them. He cannot know them of himself. Why? Because they are what? Spiritually discerned. In other words, it requires spiritual insight and revelation to judge and to understand what those things mean. Come on now. So he said, because they don't rely on the Holy Spirit, they're relying on their own intellect, they will not get it. But if they humble themselves as a child and receive the word with meekness and with humility, they will, grace will be released to them to understand. You get it? Hallelujah. Come on now. Romans 8 verse 5. He says, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the flesh, what? They set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, what do they set their minds on? The things of the spirit. See? It's a mind matter, matter of focus. What are you focusing your mind on? The mind has to be retrained to become conscious, aware, and thoughtful of the spirit. Come on. Got it? When it's not thoughtful of that, all it is thoughtful of is what here and now before them. They feel angry, touch, and smell. All the natural senses, but no spiritual senses. No insight, no revelation, no vision. And where there's no vision, the people perish. Come on. Because it can't be just for here and now and what you can handle, touch and see. You've got to see beyond that to understand the mind of God. And the Holy Spirit wants to unveil the mind of God to you. Huh? But you can't do that of yourself. That's why you need instructors. That's why you need help. <sighs> Glory to God. You got it? Hallelujah. So I said, if you are mindful of the spirit, the spirit will show you things and grant you the grace to understand it. But when you are mindful of the flesh, all the spirit trying to show you, you're not seeing or hearing it because your mind is somewhere else. You become deaf and dull and, and insensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You got it? And the kingdom, the mystery of the kingdom is unveiling those things of God to you through the spirit and the word. Huh? Huh? So then he said, you must guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with what? All diligence. Because if you don't guard your heart, then other words will come in that will replace the word of God. That will nullify it, make it not ineffective in you. Let it become dull. And a dull ox take a lot of energy and strength to chop with than a sharp one. Huh? Go and leave it with enough blister before you reach nowhere. And, go and you're going to be tempted to give up early, very early when the blister them start. Huh? But it says, when you are sharpening the world, as it says, iron sharpened iron. The world and the world's view cannot sharpen your view in the Lord. It dulls your view. That's why we come regularly to get the word. It sharpens our spiritual senses. When we are born in natural form, we have to learn those things. Touch, smell, taste, huh? hearing. Huh? We have to use our senses to learn our physical senses. When you are born again, you must learn your spiritual senses. You can't rely not only on the natural, like you only have natural birth. He said, no, you have to rely on knowing the spiritual side of your existence now. In the spirit. There has to be an awakening to your spiritual abilities. 
Hello, somebody. Your spiritual senses, spiritual values. Huh? Come on now. Those things must help to shape and mold you in the full maturity of who you are as a child of God. Huh? And not merely as a child of man. There has to be a divine shift. Huh? They call it paradigm shift. A shift in mentality in where you think and the way you reason that comes in accord to what God's word say. That you mean if you think so, and then you hear the word of God say so, you say no. I did think so, but no, since I said the word say so, it's so I think no. Your mind has to be like that with the word. Otherwise, you get stuck at a place hanging on to something fleshly and carnal by human standard and wisdom, but missing out on godly wisdom and insight and revelation. So you'll be left back in the crowd instead of aspiring and growing and advancing. You'll find yourself becoming complacent, weary and falling back till you plunge in darkness. You got it? We have to be very assertive. Come on, somebody. We can't be passive about our walk with the Lord and advance. We have to be intentional about our growth. And forceful about it too. Hello. Can't lay it back and just say whatever will be, will be. And call that faith. Uh -uh. That's not faith. That's faith. Leaving it up to chance. But the word of God that it speaks of faith is not up to chance. The word of God is not a chance. Maybe it work, maybe it don't. The word of God always works. The word of God is a certainty that it always comes to pass. It cannot lie. Come on now. So you've got to approach the word with that certainty. Huh? That what it says is what it delivers and that's what you come to get. Hello. Come on, give God the praise. All right, our time is up. We can't do any further teaching. I got a lot more to deposit, but give you a chance to respond with questions and comments and rebuttals. If there's any, those online can do the same. Just pose your question or comment in the comment box and we'll quickly, within the time given here, respond and hear them. Amen. Praise God. And those in the house, you can step up to the mic and give your comment or question. As you so wish. Praise God. Come on, give God the praise. All right, your time, Mr. Lord. Good evening, Apostle. Good evening, everyone. Praise God. Okay, Apostle, um, what stood out to me tonight was when you said that whenever we enter our workplace, schools or wherever, that we must first bind the strong man and we should always put God first and pray over, over our environment. That is really powerful to me because I've never seen it that way before mm -hmm. that we could bind a strong man over our workplaces, yeah. our homes, our school, or wherever. And you know, I always make it a practice to do that, but I did not understand that I was binding the strong man because mm -hmm. I always ask the Lord, why is it that I find things to do, tasks, they, are very, they become very easy to me, but hard to other persons. And whenever I do a task, it's always well done. And then Praise whenever God. they do it, it just looks sloppy and just don't look right. But it was always because I was asking the Lord to lead my hands, lead my mind. Lord, show me things that I will not normally see. Lord, help me to do this. Help me to do that. And I find that many of them, they don't do that because they mm -hmm. don't really put God first. They don't really care what God has said or what God has show them. And many things that I now know, it's not because I read a lot or know a lot. It's because I ask the Lord to show me other ways to do things to get favorable results. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you for that. It was really enlightening. So Thanks, I need to Lord. practice it more. Yes. Uh, and, um, that's what it means to engage the kingdom. Yes. See first the kingdom of God. Yes, and when you say that 
every word of God is connected and that mm. we must accept it because one word leads to the other and if we Hallelujah. don't accept one then we find out we're going to we're not going to grow as God would want us to grow That's and true. I believe that let me speak for myself that many of us when God says things to us we we don't we take it very lightly but mm. you know I'm training myself to see that just like you always teach us that God is always right because we are not seeing everything. We are not seeing the full picture, but God is seeing the full picture. We are only That's seeing right. what is right in front of us. Mm. And it might look good to us now, but God knows that later on in the future, it's, it might adversely affect us. Yes. So, you know, Apostle, I just want to thank you for the word. It is good that I'm here to learn so I can grow in the word because as you said that we need to be um very assertive about our growth in the lord mm -hmm. so thank you so much for the word it sounds simple but it's profound thank you praise god yes it is the word of god always sounds less than what it projects but when you engage faith with it then you unlock the power of god in his word and recognize it is not just word but it is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, anyone else? Good night, good night, good night, good night. Praise God. Um, what stood out to me tonight is when you said that we must um, exceed in our position and because our, um, our possession, we'll, when our possession grows, we must exceed in our position. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't understand Back then, but no, I understand because of what you said tonight. Because mm -hmm. since we have been sowing and, and our possession has been growing, and I heard the Lord said that um, the word is more important. No, so I said to him that I'm going to make myself more available for the word, but I didn't mm -hmm. understand why he was doing that. But no, you're telling me because my possession mm -hmm. is growing, my position must be much higher than yes. my possession. Correct. And that, that, that really stood out to me mm. because um, recently has been telling me what to do at home. And I was saying, but you are covering us, Lord. But he said, no, get this, get that, get this, get that. And I see where it worked out because I could assist the authorities the other day in a shootout that happened right in front of my house. Mm -hmm. So... I am thankful for yes. what you are doing right now because mm. I didn't understand when he was saying, you know, build deep or get higher. But now mm -hmm. you're telling me that my position must be higher than my possession. Yes. Thank you, Apostle. Praise God. That's good report. One person I remember taught me when I was at Bible school, a very powerful teacher in the spirit. They call him pretty much like a father. In the school because he didn't just come as a teacher but was really speaking to us as his children and he said use an illustration and never forget he says uh, one of the strongest growing trees you know is, is is a tree i forget the name of the tree he spoke about but he says it sends its root very deep before it sends up the shoot it sends the root very deep and it says when other trees will tumble and fall into storm, that tree will still stand up. As much as its wind ring the tree like that in a 90 degrees angle, because of the strength of the root, it will stand up back. And so he says, if you're looking to get higher, send your roots deeper. And I never forget that. If you're looking to get higher, send your roots deeper. It says the deeper grounded you are, then the less things in the environment that wind and blow against you will not move you from where God has planted you. You got it? And that is good to know and keep in mind. As I said, we are doing this preparation for the new season. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord is declaring it in the house. New season. And that speaks of greater expansion. That speaks of greater possession. That speaks of greater opportunities, greater responsibilities. Come on now. We got to get ready for that. 
and it's coming quicker than you know. It's like when oh, the Lord remind me when when Elijah sent his servant and he said, only see a cloud the size of a man's face, but Elijah said, run. <laughs> run and go tell him. <laughs> tell King Ahab, say, man, the, 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 the rain is coming. Come on now. It's the same way I'm talking to you about this, but you don't see that it's already coming. You're waiting to see it and then you say, see, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. But I tell you, it's already begun. From I announced that on Sunday, it's already begun. Oh, come on, somebody, sir. You can't wait till you see it. I'm telling you, see, it's already there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's why it says, look not on the things that are seen. Come on. For the things that are seen are temporal. But look at the things that are not seen. They are eternal. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Anyone is? Anyone is? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. Apostle, I thank you again for the Praise word. God. Um, when you're a child of God, when you're focused, um, when you have the Holy Spirit, it's like, mm. oh, shut up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mm. Jesus. Thank you, then Jesus. Then you just keep on being Thank unveiled you, in your Thank spirit. You, Jesus. Because he's Thank God. And he's like Thank touching you. a word Thank and you, a computer and it opened to many Thank words you. and many pages and you touch the word and it opened to further pages and more words. So that's all the word is. The word is full, full and pregnant with the word and knowledge and wisdom and power of God. Hallelujah. 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 The most powerful Hallelujah. thing Thank you, God has Jesus. given to us is his word and his spirit. Yes. And it comes enveloping each other. It's combined. Hallelujah. Thank to you, release Jesus. instruction and power to carry it out. Thank it's you, like Jesus. the code in our DNA yes. to reveal his purpose and his will in Thank us. You, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Apostle, what stood out mm. to me is that you have to be mindful of the spirit, not the flesh. Praise God. The spirit has to be used to connect the physical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I so often flesh, flesh rise up. And as I said, I remember mm -hmm. so often at work, the flesh rise up. It's like the Holy Spirit just pat me down and said, no. Mm -hmm. Because how would I minister to others when I allow the flesh to take over? That's right. And I, I want to tell you that mm -hmm. I think Monday night I was at work and there was this, um, one of my coworkers didn't turn up for work, so... Another one came from another station. And, you know, we were there and we were talking and I started to share the word as I always ask the Lord, Lord, help me to minister your word whenever I go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And Apostle, we were there and he was telling me about um, he attends um, Seventh-day Adventists, but no more. He started to listen to this. So first, when I was talking to me, he said, which church you attend? Because you sound like an apostolic or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because I keep talking about the Holy Spirit and what the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit did to me. And, and, I, and I was sharing to him that I remember this Sunday. And, it's, and I said, it starts with obedience. When mm -hmm. you are obedient to the word of God, yes. it, 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 it brings something within you, the Holy Spirit. Because uh -huh. I remember um, the Sunday when, as I, as I stood it, as I shared it over and over, mm. and I remember the young man was standing right here, Sister Salman's son, and he was praying for him. Mm -hmm. And he was wearing this pink T-shirt. <laughs> and when I stood here, I, I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. But I heard, and I didn't know it was the Lord speaking. And I, I remember when he said, go there and touch the young man. And I said, too dear because I said, I looked around and I said, I, I'm going to look that foolish and stupid. Because persons are going to look at me and say, and I remember the second time he said, go and touch the young man. 
and I passed the, but the third time this fear came over me and I stood and I went and I touched him and when I came back here I hear the Lord say I have placed my anointing on you mm -hmm. and from then you know some, like every, all hell break loose as what people said and that's how I, I learned to be obedient hallelujah, hallelujah. and so I am grateful that mm -hmm. I am in that position to, to retain the word and to, to share the word of God because it is important. And, and mm. one thing I learn again about the word is that you have to be bold when you're speaking the word mm. and you have to live that life. I, I remember um, Tuesday, I went on the road and I saw somebody who I haven't seen in years. Yeah. And, you know, he was asking me about Alex. And I said, well, Alex is a big man now. And he said, only one. I said, yes, only one. <laughs> and he said, but you need somebody else. He said, I have somebody. And I don't know. Hallelujah. I said, I have somebody. I said, I have somebody who will be always there. All I have to do is live the life and obedient to the word of God. <laughs> and yeah. he was like, well, well, well. I said, well. <laughs> I said, that's what keeping me. I said, when mm -hmm. everybody is gone, I know he is still there. Glory yes. be. So just, I just want to <laughs> encourage somebody that you have to live the life. It, it takes sacrifice. It takes time. I mean, mm. you know, sometimes when, when you're speaking the word to somebody, it's gibberish. You're just talking gibberish. But you <laughs> know that it is the word of God. Yes, yes. And, and it comes with clarity. Glory mm. be to God. It's foolishness to the natural man. But to those with the spirit, the word the spirit teaches us and unlocks the mysteries, the hidden truths of those words to us. And believe me, it's spirit and life, it's food to our soul. As the word of God says, foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who believe it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Yeah, anyone else? Come on. Hallelujah. The word is quick and it's powerful. The rabo shanda. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good night, Apostle. Yes, dear. Good night. Tisha Williams from online. She said, thank you, Apostle, for the word. The word is a healing for me, and I'm thanking you for always keeping me in your prayers and my family as well. That's Tisha Williams. Oh, that's Marvit. That's Marvit Williams. I like to use the proper name. You know, them love use pet name, but me love the proper name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good night, Apostle. Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night. Uh, the word that stood out to me today when you spoke that um, they failed to accept his death, mm -hmm. and so therefore they will fail to accept his resurrection. That's and that true. is so true. Because <laughs> even after he died, he had to show them his hands that it is Christ himself. Mm -hmm. So, whatsoever he speaking initially to us, we have to um, let that word really touch us and, and to really manifest in our lives that whatever he's bringing to in the future or more, it will um, increase. <laughs> yeah, increase. Definitely. So That's good. Oh, if, we, if you are unable to die second and receive grade one, are you going to do on grade two? Is it going to be more advanced knowledge? In other words, God's not keeping us at one level. And don't you see that those who are staying at one level are suffering because of it? Suffering immensely. Come on, I know from persons from my old church, mother church, where I used to go on. They, they still believe the same thing like when I was there 25 years ago. Lord Jesus. Still, uh, when, when I, they, 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 they were, they, one, a couple of them met me in the bank. I was talking with me, and, and they were talking about a brother and, and uh, that and me that used to be together and saying, Well, you know, oh, you know, he's still do, serving the Lord. We, we know that he, he's not doing so right, but you know, all we got to do is just pray for him. I tell him, Say, Listen, my man, when we pray, it's not witchcraft prayers, you know. We pray that opportunities for salvation will come about the person and, and calls would come out to them and visions and calling for the Lord for them to hear the instruction and turn. 
but our prayers do not make them saved. They must choose to be saved. But she, I'm going to explain that term. She still say, yeah, man, but none can be prayer. We just keep praying. And, and, and I know that was a talk I got when I was there as a teenager. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They have not gone past kindergarten. Because they don't even come to the party part. Jesus said, I pray not for the world. <laughs> that part is very hard for them to accept. I pray not for the world, but for those you have given me. And those will believe them. Even, since, even yesterday, I got a letter from a minister saying, we, 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 the church got to get actively involved because look how much crime is taking place in the city and we are the watchmen. Is, is we fall asleep at the gate, make those things that me say, I uno fall asleep. Me not fall asleep. Because I'm sure that when Jesus was here preaching, killing when it happened, and he may not get killed too. It's not the first time they put people on the cross. Enough that that was happening. And many who died when they tore Shiloh fall on them and 18 dead. And many who pile take the blood of them and sprinkle on the blood of Hila. Sacrifice them for use them blood. Come on. And the Lord seeing all of that never say, well, you know, I need to really do something about this. I've been sleeping while this thing is happening. No, man. We are here to point the people to Christ. The solution to this is not about people living healthy, long and wealthy, and safe in sin. The point is that they must come out of sin. That is the mission of the church. Mission of the church is not to start feeding program. Or another man said, if you buy water, chuck and start chuck water to people in a year when I have no water. Church must buy water, chuck. He said, listen, me send the water, chuck money, come and give me. And we get to preach the gospel. Lord Jesus. They must think, say, water, chuck me, they send. Hallelujah. But I said to them, like a Jesus, I have water to give you. <laughs> and you drink this water, you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the water chuck is already here. Just need to connect properly, man. And get the supply. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not against the church getting wealth. But what I hear them planning to do with wealth too. Say so they're trying to outdo the world because it's not the government should be doing this. Nor the world should be doing this. The church should be doing it. I didn't hear the Lord say that. You know. I mean, I find no place now by where the Lord tell me say. He must go up one water commission and start to chuck water to people. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. You understand? Because I believe there is a lot more we need to reach. And we are not here to make them comfortable in sin till the Lord come. We are here to preach them out of sin and make them know say, if they don't repent, they will likewise perish. I need to understand this thing. So, I don't know. I don't know. What well, then go do with me? Because we depend on a different level. Long time too. So, you know, easy to get around this one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyone else? Yeah, man, we have enough more work for do. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. Yeah, and me go, me go lose sleep at night time there. They, they wonder about how much people they get killed in our city. They stay there. If they don't repent enough more than that, go and get killed. Praise the Lord. Then, then things say, church people, they kill church people, make crime, make murder rate, they go up. And the people, them outside of the church, they kill one another. Who don't want to hear the word, but say they are right. So then nothing say more that way. Just sit down with the destroyer, what you going to do? Destroy you. Okay, he's not saving none. And we tell him, say the thief come to steal. Kill and to destroy a long time. But Christ come that we might have what? So if you not choose Christ, so you're going to have the life. 
Sit down with the thief and say, you go happy. All right. Sit down there. As they say, pan the, pan the, the, the drama play, turn the day. Because you're going to find out, say, that now we're caught well. Come on now. Huh? You have to line up with the word. Anything not line up with the word, go and perish. Hello. And then now go have enough police to cover feet. Hallelujah. They can't get half a population turn police. And crime go up on a high till they recognize say, Jesus Christ is Lord. That they need to recognize. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. that, that is what every knee is going about to. Hello. Mm, so government they give them more job. Government they give them better education. Government they invest more for road, more opportunity, more, more things to make things run smoother and still crime they go up. Because that is not the answer. Uh, that was today. I was reading that word and I always say the wisdom of even the rulers of this world is say they are coming to nothing. To nothing. So follow back at them and say part you come to. <laughs> you still don't follow back again, the Lord. He said they are coming to nothing. And as I see it, in that first Corinthians 2. Verse 6, he says, however, we speak wisdom amongst who? Those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the wisdom of what? The rulers. Who are the rulers of this age? Huh? Oh. Who are the rulers of this age? Eh? Of course. Uh, some don't know them must think say I church. And I church. Because he says, who are coming to nothing. And a church not coming to nothing. You better understand that. The rulers of this city say they are coming to nothing. Why? Because they are using worldly wisdom. They are, not being, they are not making decisions by the direction of God and His Word and His Holy Spirit. They are making decisions by what they feel, see, and reason among their carnal self. And just like what Daniel said to Daniel 2, he said, all the kingdoms of men will be destroyed and God will set up a kingdom in the earth that will not be given to another. All these kingdoms of men, they give to another. You know, they don't pass over to somebody else. But he said, the kingdom of God is eternal. It is an everlasting kingdom. Huh? Hallelujah. So he said, man, you can't follow them. But the wisdom of God is pure. <laughs> Glory to God. The wisdom of this world, he says, earthly, demonic, carnal. Come on. So you follow the wisdom of the world. That's why Paul said, we do not speak the wisdom of this world. So you need to get mature in the things of God that the Holy Spirit can unveil them to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. So they are not relying on the Lord. They are siding with the world to make decisions that the world approve and like them for. So they can get merits and praise and thumbs up from the world so they can get one another round to rule. They are not putting God as their priority. It's not the kingdom first. Hallelujah. It's the world first for them. And God put in a little box where he belongs. 
Hallelujah. So of course the Lord say that is passing away. Hallelujah. It will not last. The gold, the silver, the iron, the bronze, the clear, it will be destroyed. And the only thing left is the kingdom of God upon this earth. Come on now. You got it? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, standing, we're going to pray. Time to release. Any more comments? That was it. Praise God. All right. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that has granted us the ability to receive to understand and to know your word. Without you, all this would be inconceivable to us. Would be far beyond what we can receive in our spirit. But you have placed a desire in us. A hunger in us. A thirst in for righteousness and your word and your Holy Spirit is bringing that to us releasing that within us that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus hallelujah that the works of Satan will not prevail against us that we will not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that will prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Because all the things of this world, said it's the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, these things are not of you. They will all perish. They will all pass away. But your word will never pass away. From everlasting to everlasting. It will always stand. It will always be your word. And you watch over your word to bring it to pass. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. Praise God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit present now to confirm your word with signs and with wonders that miracles will break forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That miracles will break forth upon your people right now. Every sickness, every disease, every work of darkness will be bound, cast down, irreparably damaged in the name of Jesus. Release your power right now. Release your people right now. Release our possessions right now in the name of Jesus root us and ground us Lord in your word in your spirit in the name of Jesus 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 break forth with power Lord and unleash your power in the midst of your people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let your glory be revealed in this house. As we look to you in faith, we claim the victory and give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, praise him in the house. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, wave those hands and bless the Lord in the house. Rababo Shama Seto. Rebecca Torobo Shende. Ramamon de Lebesa. Eba Ikebo Shanda. Ebabo Shebahai. In the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. We cramp and paralyze every work of darkness and render them powerless right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for grace and more grace over this house and over your people nationwide. Hallelujah. And overseas. Let them see and discern a shifting around them right now. That they have stepped into a new season. A dawn of a new awakening over the body of Christ. For greater works. Greater demonstration. And manifestation of your power. Of your Holy Spirit. And of your word. Within your people. We claim the victory. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, praise him in the house. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's great. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Time to release you. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart. Just sit for a minute. Praise God. And while you're doing so, I'll give the final word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ to you and your household that you will know the power of the word hallelujah when we put faith in the word of God it's not just mere words of men what's recorded and declared by men God is the one who announced it and declared it through men through his spirit and he's declaring to you that he still watches over his word to bring it to pass and he's confirming it with signs and with wonders Hallelujah. And he wants you to be in it. To win it. To be born of his word. Born of his spirit. Is to become a true child of God. And we must remain loyal. And faithful to his word. And to the leadership of his Holy Spirit. That's how we demonstrate the life of God in us. Hallelujah. And so we encourage you to do so. As God is expanding his family. And he wants you in it. Only his family are true ears of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Ears of him and joint ears with Christ. And he wants you to be in the number. And that isn't by the flesh. That isn't by blood or will of flesh or will of man. It's done by God. But you must submit yourself to God. And resist the devil. And the power and life of God will show up in you. As a true child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to get more of the word. You can get it from us. We have a book release last year. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. Subtitled the gospel that Jesus preached. Hallelujah. You can order it online from Amazon.com. Go on Amazon.com. Type in the search box. Richard V. Fagan. And the book will come up. You can order it anywhere around the world. Through Amazon.com. You can also... Hallelujah. Send a friend's request to Richard V. Fagan on Facebook. Hallelujah. You'll be plugged into our five live stream teachings. And of course, we have edited those teachings and put it on YouTube with added scripture for your learning and for your growth and maturity in the Lord. You want to know about our website? It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. You can, of course, Hallelujah. 
go on our website and see more about our ministry we restarted this ministry god has really moved and done some awesome things through the ministry as we believe will be great for you and the building of your faith in the lord amen praise god those who have been blessed by the word can also sow to the ministry through the website any further question you can call me richard figan 876 839-9390 or 876-557-2427. Looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. The number that we've just given you can also order our online daily devotional that we've also launched as a love gift to you, whether you buy the book or not, or so to this ministry or not. We love to send that to his daily teachings in the word from January. Hallelujah to September, day-to-day -day teachings, the word of the gospel of the kingdom. And it will be great devotional for you. It can be sent by WhatsApp on your phone or device that you can watch and read it and really build your faith and build the faith of others who will hear you and be saved by the word of God. Amen. Praise God. You've been blessed tonight. Oh, thank you all for coming and for those who join us online, send our greetings and love to you. Hallelujah to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you real good. Have a great night in the Lord. Love you all. Praise God.